Welcome to our lecture online. Now here we have the key principles necessary to determine the size of the orbit of the electron in the hydrogen atom. We understood that a small particle traveling very fast with velocity v travels like a wave and so we realized then that the path of the electron around the nucleus of an atom had to travel like a wave and therefore the path length, the circumference of the orbit had to be equal to an integer number of wavelengths. We also knew from the de Broglie wavelength that the wavelength of a small particle equals Planck's constant divided by the momentum. Of course, the momentum is the mass times the velocity. We also knew that the principle of the particle staying in orbit around the nucleus had to be determined by the centripetal force being equal to the Coulomb force. So here, the centripetal force being equal to the Coulomb force meant that mv squared over r had to equal kq1, q2 over the distance, the radius squared. So we can now use these two equations to determine the radius of the particle, the radius of the electron in the orbit around the nucleus, because this equation here has both velocity and the radius. This here will also have the velocity in the radius because the wavelength has to be related to the radius of the orbit. So let's do that. Let's go ahead and uh, put the velocity over here so we can write that the velocity of the particle of the electron has to be equal to h divided by m times lambda. And we know that lambda had to equal a number of, well, I should say the circumference, let me write it this way, we know that the circumference had to equal an integer number of wavelengths, which means that 2 pi r must be equal to the integer number times lambda, the wavelength of the particle. Now let's assume for a moment that n equals 1, so we're going to look at the innermost orbit when n equals 1, and so we're going to set 2 pi r equal to 1 times lambda. So that's where that came from, 2 pi r. So when we plug that in there, we know that the velocity is equal to h, divided by m times 2 pi r for the innermost orbit. Of course, for the next orbit, the next orbit, n would be 2, n would be 3, and we would have to then, of course, find the appropriate, the appropriate adjustment for that. But we'll look for the orbit when n equals 1. Now we're going to solve this equation for v, and right away we can see that this r cancels out with that r, so we can write that v squared is equal to k, times q1 times q2. Now the charges are the electron and the proton and we consider those the base charge of E. So we call that E and we can then call it E squared because the charge of the electron is equal in magnitude to the charge of the proton which we consider E. And then let's see what else we have here. We have an M that comes down here and we still have one R. So we have the K E squared divided by R and divided by M. So now we have an equation here that tells us that V squared is equal to that and an equation that tells us that V is equal to this. So let's square that up here. So now we can say that V squared is equal to H squared divided by M squared 4 pi squared times R squared. And sometimes what we can do is we have h over pi can be written as h bar. So this can also be written as v squared is equal to h bar squared divided by 4m squared r squared. So now we have two equations where we have v squared in terms of the radius r. We can now set those two equations equal to each other to get rid of v, to eliminate v. Now we only have one constant in there that we're looking for, r, which is the radius of the orbit. So now here we can write that ke squared divided by mr is equal to h bar squared divided by 4m squared r squared. Again, we can eliminate some terms here or some variables. We have m and m squared, r and r squared. Now we're looking for r. So we're going to take this r, put it up here. So we have r is equal to h bar squared divided by, we have in the denominator a 4, an m, this k comes down here, and this e squared comes down here. Whoop, a little big there. There we go. So now we have r, bring this r over here, k e squared goes down here, h bar squared is on top, and we have 4m in the denominator. So now we have an expression here that tells us what the radius of the orbit should be based upon using these principles. 
Now let's plug in the values and see if we get the right value for the radius of the Bohr atom. So we have R is equal to H bar. So I'm going to write this H over pi. So H is 6.626 times 10 to the minus 34 joules times seconds. We have to square that divided by, uh, let's see. So we have H bar is equal to H divided by pi. So here I have h squared in the numerator. I need pi squared in the denominator. So we have pi squared. We have 4, the mass of the electron, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilograms. We have k from Coulomb's law times time, 9 times 10 to the 9th. And we have e squared. Let's see here. Looks like I'm running out of room, so I'm going to put it on the other side over here. Bring this R over and make it, give myself a little bit more room. So E squared is the charge of a single electron, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19. We have to square that. Now that'll give us the energy in joules, and I think we're good to go. All right. So R is equal to... Now, let's see if I can find my calculator. Ah, it's hiding underneath here. All right, found my calculator. Good. So, where are we? Here we go. 6.626 e to the 34 minus. We have to square that. Fifty-three times ten to the minus twelve meters, which is equal to fifty-three pico meters and pico is of course 10 to the minus 12. There we go and that is the Bohr radius, the radius of the hydrogen atom and it turns out that all the assumptions that they made, all the principles that they devised to try to determine the structure of the atom seemed to work out for them and they were able to come up with the correct value of the Bohr radius at least for the innermost orbit. Of course, we'll see later how that changes as we go for the second energy level, third energy level, and so forth. But remarkably enough, making these assumptions, they were able to come up with the actual size of the hydrogen atom. Quite a feat, and that's how they did it.